Hey guys, welcome back to video number four. Um, we're going to talk about Newton's third law, the last of Newton's laws of motion. Um, the first two were about how to get objects started and um, applying a force on objects. This law is really about the interaction of two objects. So people know Newton's third law as for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And simply put, what this means is that if I push on the board, the board is going to push back on me equally. Or if we wanted to see it as like two football players running head on into each other, this guy might hit this one, but really they're both feeling the force. So every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Um, in order to better understand and describe these, this interaction, I want to introduce the idea of a free body diagram. And we're going to be referring to free body diagrams as FBDs. Free body diagrams are just simple ways by which we can show the forces acting on any given object. So let's take this car, for instance, this red car here. Right now, it's sitting still. And I'll represent it as this dot. Every object in free body diagrams will be represented by a dot. Because it's on Earth, we know that gravity is pulling down. I'll represent gravity by this downward facing arrow. And I'll call it force subset G, force of gravity, right? So I'll call it force G. But Newton's second law says if there's one force acting on this object, it should be accelerating. This object is very clearly not accelerating. So we must have a second object I'm oh, sorry, a second force acting on this object to cancel this force out. We call that force the force from this surface. A force from a surface is called a normal force. And we'll talk about normal forces a little bit later, maybe in the next video, maybe in the video following that. But for right now, know that these two forces are the same and they cancel each other out. The same forces. This object is putting a force downward equal to gravity equal really to its weight, and then the, the surface has to push back upwards with an equal and opposite force. If not, the, the object would drop straight down through the table. Now, we can represent any force using a free body diagram. If I were to apply a constant force in this direction, we could say that the force on a free body diagram, like this, I'm going to call it force pushing. Okay. So this is the basics of free body diagrams. We're going to do a little bit of work with them next class. So if you don't understand it quite yet, just kind of get the grasp that the object must be represented by a point, and each force is given a direction, the arrow, and an amount, the length of the arrow, right? So the point is the object, the forces are represented by these lines and arrows. Let's see Newton's third law in action. Here I have these two Pasco cars. They're really pretty cool because, like I've said before, the wheels are nearly frictionless. They really, they really um, move. But it also has this little spring-activated uh, plunger right here that I will reset. And I'll use this spring-activated plunger to push on this other car. And I want you to notice how the cars interact. So apply this, and the blue car will push on the red car. And let's see what else happens here. I'm going to use this pencil because the little pusher thing is really small. So I just want to make sure that I hit it right. Hmm. Let's try that one more time just so that you guys can see it. Um, hopefully when Porter gets back and he's able to edit this video, he'll be able to 
slow this down and we'll be able to see it in really cool slow motion, slow mo video of this thing popping out and pushing on the other thing. So I'm gonna push this button here. The two cars push away from each other. How is that possible? Only this one has the plunger. How is it possible that this one pushes on this one? Well, let's draw it as some free body diagrams. Here I'll call this R for red, and this one B for blue. And blue pushes on the red car so that the blue car, so that the red car moves back in this direction. Right, as we saw, this car jetted back in that direction, which is kind of what we expected. But the reason why the blue car moved in this direction was because the red car pushed back with an equal and opposite force. And if we look at the slow motion video, we'll see that really these accelerated in opposite directions at, at the same pace. Right? This one was moving just as fast as this one was moving. More importantly, this one reached that maximum speed at the same rate that this one reached that maximum speed. So the interaction was equal, yet opposite. Right? This is pushing to the, to the, I don't know what side that is for you guys, left, probably. And this one is pushing to the right for you guys on the screen. I don't know, I don't remember quite how that works. But they're equal, yet opposite. Newton's third law. There was an action. There was an equal and opposite reaction. Let's watch one more um, cool little example of Newton's laws. Let's watch this really quick video and then I'll come back. So here I've set up a YouTube video of a 357 Magnum being fired in slow motion, just in case you know my awesome AV guy is unable to to slow that last bit down. But here we've got uh, a gun, and when I play this video, we can see... Mm, the gun was fired, and what happens? What happens when the gun is fired? Let's see if it fires again. Ah! The bullet is given a force in this direction. A lot of force, right? So the bullet travels really fast out of the gun. What happens to the gun? The gun is kicked back with an equal and opposite force. Right? Recoil on a gun is a perfect example of Newton's third law. We've got one force, which is the bullet being pushed out of the gun by expanding gases, but the expanding gases actually push back on the gun as well, giving us some recoil. Hopefully that clears that up for you guys. I'll see you soon.